so rest api is stone 25 that means it has been 25 years now since the first time this rest api concept was released and if you don't know about rest we'll discuss a little bit about this but i came across this interesting blog post link of which would be in description which covers a little bit of history about rest and if you don't know about rest then this is also like one good way to learn about it so you see that computers and apis in general go way back to you know even 1950s because computers like you know i mean obviously you won't remember but if you have read about it then we know that they were huge giant machines completely occupying full rooms with vacuum tubes and all of that before they became these tiny superpower computers which can be held in our phone in, in our hands right so skipping to the modern time where actually rest start was 2000 right so roy fielding thesis introduced the idea of rest api so in 2000 roy fielding's phd thesis introduced the concept of rest which is representational state transfer defining a scalable and stateless architecture for web-based application and this probably changed the world right everything from your aws accounts to the groceries you're ordering on your quick commerce app everything is working on http apis right which for the most part uses some way of rest maybe they are using graphql maybe they are using grpc something around that but a very very common and popular way still is using rest api in fact codedam and fermi on the two platforms which we run we started both with graphql and then eventually shifted to rest because it did not suit our needs so we started from the future and came back to the past in 2002 bezos issued an internal mandate at amazon requiring all teams to expose their data and functionality through a service interface which is api which laid the groundwork for amazon's adoption and of microservices architecture and modern cloud computing okay in 2010 Flickr's photo api allowed developers to programmatically access and manipulate user uploaded photos enabling features like photo search upload tagging all of that so even before that i would say like you know be even before 2010 i think in the 10 years time rest was the most popular way whether you're building with php the initial versions of facebook all of that everything like the web worked on rest api right the status codes the headers how post request is used for sending data across http so all of that was already matured enough then came 2015 where graphql came into picture so facebook introduced graphql in 2015 a flexible query language and runtime for apis that enables clients to request only the data they need streamlining data retrieval and enhancing efficiency now this is one of the things which i really 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 believe that which i am personally a you know victim of that this looked as an extremely shiny tool graphql has 100 percent its use cases where it fits and it solves the problems but for the most part you don't need a technology like graphql because it introduces more complexity than it solves most cases works great with rest api itself yes your mini app your small app does not need graphql it's completely fine to work on rest this is something we you know we personally like fell into the trap of like okay this is, looks nice this is great and we started with graphql and then just about this year we finally finished our migration of removing graphql completely from our stack so we are 100 percent rest now i mean it's not exactly rest it's a internal system of our own but it's not graphql then in 2016 google introduced grpc a high performance open source framework for remote procedure calls rpcs are basically you know you can think of it as api call only that enables efficient communication between distributed systems leveraging HTTP2 and protocol buffers for data serialization. So because it doesn't use like plain text and all, the data transfer is much more efficient. It, it says like it's uses leverages HTTP2 also. I'm not exactly sure how it does that, but it's it's like a popular thing out there among people who want to, you know, connect systems in a high performing way. But still, I feel like REST is still one of the most popular and the best approach for creating any sort of new API, especially if you look at things like open api for example so these sort of things open api what it does is that takes in your whole api specification if you can generate that and creates like nice documentation right away i'm not sure if you can combine it with graphql and all but it fits in pretty well with the rest api which we have today so yeah so this is like some of the a lot of tooling has been developed on top of rest apis right so which makes it feel like it's a good mature technology of course it has its own cons for example you will find all the examples where you know status quo 200 returns error or something here and there happens but you get the idea plus you see that ai bots and everything who need to do certain tasks for example if it wants to book something or if it wants to you know create a certain event in your system these apis anyway are inevitable right it's very cumbersome to go through the whole interface i mean sure you can do that now also with agents and all with vision and all but it's great if ai themselves are able to use api so an internet api first place would be a great place to be all in all 
all, I think like just to conclude this video, there are certain things you can take away from it. First one is, you know, options you have today, REST API using a REST API, GraphQL or gRPC, or there, there are, you know, things like tRPC or so now, which is like, you know, a popular option among Node.js developers. So if you have used this, this is also great. What we have internally at Code Diamond for me on is sort of similar to how tRPC works, but we don't use tRPC. We have customized it for our own use case. So that is what is there. And what I would recommend is just sticking to REST API, especially if you're a beginner, try to stick to REST APIs. Don't use these technologies unless you absolutely need them or you need that, you know, you are outgrowing your needs, specifically with GraphQL. With GraphQL, like this deserves a whole another video, but we have made a lot of mistakes, which led us to figure out that we need a simpler alternative. What we have is not exactly REST. It's a mix of REST plus best parts of TRPC. So we have like an in-house framework for the API server, which we have. So that's all for this one. I will see you in the next video really soon.